Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. This is a requested video, and if you would like to request me to do a video, then message me. Uh, people who subscribe to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month get priority on that sort of thing, and they also get discounts and a certain amount of exclusive or pre-available content that I produce for games, writing, videos, and everything else that I do. Now, there's YouTube issues, so please do like this video, share this video, that's probably most important at the moment because a lot of my videos are being suppressed by the new bots and I'm getting about half as many impressions as I used to, so getting my videos in front of eyeballs is probably the biggest thing you can do to help me. If you do subscribe, make sure you hit the bell and make sure you hit get all notifications because for some reason known only to YouTube, subscriptions aren't subscriptions and there's like a three stage process before you'll actually get notifications. If you want to be sure that you see new videos and other things that I do, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, I have pages in support of various other things that I do there as well, Minds, Gab, Instagram. <laughs> You can find me. All the links should be down below if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, go to YouTube and the links will be down below. Right. So, how to write. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly... Probably the most common, uh, most annoying and most difficult question that most writers of any stripe get asked is... Where do you get your ideas? And there's no good answer because it will be different <laughs> for everybody. Uh, if you're anything like me, you get too many ideas and you forget half of them and 90% of everything is crap, as Ted Theodore Sturgeon once said. So, yeah, there's, there's that to consider. So the best thing I find is to just keep a record of every idea that you have. It will be a disorganized mess, but that can sometimes be inspiring as well. So just write down everything that you think of, every, every passing thought that you have, or oh, that would be cool in a story, or that would make a cool story. Keep a notebook maybe, scribble it in there, keep a, a TXT file on your desktop somewhere easily accessible that you can just go and put it in. You can always organize it later if you're the kind of person that's super organized. But for me, I just throw a bunch of ideas together and then and then see how they work and make up a lot of it as as I go along. As I go through the process, as skinny puppy might put it. Other people have more unorthodox ways of getting ideas like stealing them from people or pulling a misery. of someone gently rapping. Most important thing, no matter what you're writing, no matter what you're doing, is simply to get the words down. So just write, 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 write. Doesn't have to be correct. Doesn't the Spelling doesn't have to be correct. The grammar doesn't have to be correct. The punctuation doesn't have to be correct. Just get the words down. And write even when you don't feel like it. Um, treat it like a like a job if you want to take it seriously and write 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 that that's that's the first main point surrealist painter Rene Magritte used to put on his, his bowler hat and his suit and he would treat painting like a job so he would put on his suit he would go downstairs he would paint from nine to five with a break for lunch and then knock off and that seems weird for a creative process but that kind of discipline if you can muster it is the best way to just get stuff done. You can always go back and re-edit things. And I often find that things I write when I'm not really in the mood for it or don't feel up to it are actually okay when I go back to them after a couple of days. So that's, that's the main thing. Probably the best way to really kind of capture and present your, your voice and, and to write as a general rule is to write the way that you speak. So, just 
read it out loud to yourself as, as you go along or go back and read it out loud to yourself and you'll find the, the kind of natural cadence and you'll find where the punctuation needs to go and you'll find where you repeat words or common figures of speech that you use too often turn up it's the same with with videos you know if, if you record them and you find yourself saying things a lot like you know like i just did back then yeah it, you become aware of it and you can maybe start to counteract it and and do other things so that's that's good breaks so when you make a slight pause it's a comma when you take a breath essentially it's a full stop and when you pause for a moment and structure another thought that's where a new paragraph might be uh, otherwise you can look into style guides and all kinds of other things that will that will help you get that right so there's all that but the most important absolute most important thing is to just get the words down and do do break it up even if you're just making a blog post or a, or a facebook post or, or whatever the more you break up the text and with commas with with full stops with paragraphs the easier it is to read because there is a discrete chunk of text that someone can absorb without it bleeding into the next one so really that's that's the best advice i can give right, right naturally to you the way you speak um, and develop your own voice that way and then you can come back to that and add in all the punctuation and everything else that you need rapping at my chamber door to some visitor i muttered editing is a total son of a bitch especially if you're self-publishing or you don't have anyone else to help you if you're just blogging or whatever making sure that your writing is good when you don't have other people to draw on second sets of eyes and so on it's really difficult because you tend to have blind spots to your own mistakes the kinds of things that you repeat or words and descriptions that you use too often but you still should read through it yourself and the longer you can leave between the time that you wrote it and the time that you review it the better that's not really possible with blogging but it is with writing i mean when i finish a short story or a novel yeah i write the whole thing before i go back and read through it because by then it's had a bit of time to cool you know it may have been a few days and then you're more alert to these kind of things so you will tend to miss problems that you've put in if you're reviewing something you've written yourself but you should still do it anyway now finding kind of beta readers or uh, playtesters if you're writing a game is incredibly difficult unless you're writing something for D&D directly or or, or 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 whatever unless you've got an established name and a, and a sizable fan base it's really difficult to find people willing to do that even spouses and partners uh, and so on you know will start to feel imposed upon or feel that they can't give you reasonable critique which is which is probably true because they want to spare your feelings and they know how important this all is to you so if you have support from a fan base you can release kind of beta manuscripts to them i wouldn't just do this to anyone if you run a, a patreon or a or a maker support or some other kind of subscription service for your fans those are the kinds of people and towards the, the higher tiers maybe because those people have shown a commitment to supporting you and are unlikely to leak any early manuscript or whatever to, to other people which you don't really want because it will eat into into later sales but the more different people you can get to review your text the better now they may give you some feedback that you don't like and you can feel free to ignore that they may feel that a certain plot point doesn't work or whatever and you have to have enough confidence in your own vision to, to stick with it to an extent but to take reasonable criticism in hand so that's useful tools can help you overcome this blindness to your own mistakes um, I use text-to-speech software um, most I think Windows 10 comes bundled with narrator I haven't tried that I used to use read please these days I mostly use different different web apps here and there to just read through your text read it read it back to you and speech software has gotten a lot better in recent years and it will help you spot unnatural cadence and run on sentences and things like that. it's like having someone else read through it for you or it's kind of second best to that so that that will help there's a tool called Grammarly uh, which I find very useful that's a that's a paid subscription service but that will check anything you write on the web 
and you can cut and paste sections of documents that you've been working on, you know, writing, whole blog posts or whatever else in there, and it will highlight like possible word mismatches that you may have made, like night, the guy on horseback, and night, you know, not day. Yeah, you know, it'll highlight things like that and say, "Oh, which one did you mean?" And it does. It does really help add a little spit and polish. It's still not as good as a, another human reading through what you've written, but between that and uh, text to speech, I think you, you've got a really strong tool set. I this is what I use for most of my releases, where I can't afford an editor. Which brings us to editors. Editors are scum. You cannot trust them with your baby. They will hack it to pieces. They will raise any and all points because they have absolutely no emotional attachment to you or your work. They're all bastards. That said, the author-editor relationship is something like a, a codependent, abusive spousal <laughs> relationship. Uh, they need you, you need them. Uh, but they can't help but be horrible <laughs> to you and to your child, which is your manuscript. But you need that. You need someone to be ruthless. Some edit. What makes an editor bad isn't there isn't their ruthlessness. Ruthlessnessness <laughs> isn't how ruthless they are. It's when they overwrite your voice or when they insert their own preferences and decisions and styles into what you've written, where they self-insert into your novel in, in a lot of ways, where they don't... It, ideally, it's a partnership. When, if they don't listen to you, if they overwrite things that you think are important, even after a protest and so on, or don't respect what you've done or what you're trying to achieve, even after you've explained it to them, then they're probably not a good editor. Um, editing is relatively expensive, especially for freelancers on a shoestring budget. If you've got to promote and do everything else yourself, and you, it's a gamble whether it, whether you should spend the money or not. Um, but if you want to really give it a shot and, and put out something polished, then yeah, find an editor. You can find good ones on places like Fiverr and so on, but it's rare and difficult. I think the, the best thing to do is to talk to other freelance or self-published authors and, and find the kind of people that they recommend. Personally, I recommend Ghostwood's books. Rapping at my chamber door to some visitor, I muttered. If you want to be a better writer, read. Read voraciously. Bookmark things that you find interesting or useful in whatever it is that you're doing. If you're doing games writing and you, you find a particular way of describing something is, is really useful and conveys the point and makes it easy to understand, slap a bookmark in there. If you find a, a particular way of constructing a paragraph or describing a scene strikes you really well, you know, bookmark it and reference these things when you're doing something similar in your own work. If you're unsure of something in writing, like, uh, whereabouts should I put this paragraph? How should I bleed the conversation that's going on in quotes into the description and, and back again? Look through a novel that you like, find a passage that does that and use that. I find that to be a far better way to learn than the way we were taught in the school. It's much easier to understand if, if you observe it and you're actually interested in it than if you're being forced to through some tedious, boredom filled drivel like Jane Eyre or Silas Mana or whatever else they force in front of you at school these days. So yeah, read. Read lots. And don't just read for fun, read analytically sometimes. One of the hardest things for me with my depression has been that it makes focusing on reading very difficult and I've noticed my own writing beginning to suffer from that, from that lack of example. So if you can, read read a lot the other thing is to write now i find it useful to have two three projects on the go at once that way if one doesn't inspire me on a particular day one of the other ones might and then i can at least write something and if none of them do there's always blogging social media you can do marketing for things that you that you've published previously you know there's always something you can do where you can write and it's a bit like exercise the more that you do it every day the, the stronger you get at it even if you don't want to do it you, you know you learn ways that you can that you can push through that and still get your get your writing done so find a way to do that now this is gonna sound really strange but 
tweeting is useful. You'll learn to be economical with your phrasing. You'll learn how to pack more punch into a shorter amount of text. Less so than previously, since they've doubled the amount of tweet space that you have, but it's still a really useful exercise for conveying or trying to convey a lot in a very short message. And it also highlights how that can create difficulties and, and misunderstandings and so on. Plus, if you're stuck working at home by yourself a lot of the time, as, as I am, then YouTube and other forms of social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, that's your office, that's your water cooler. That's where you can reach out to other people for advice and help, where you can tell people about what you're doing, how you're doing, if you've had a good day, a bad day or whatever. And that kind of replaces that, that office banter and socialization that you otherwise would get with a regular job. But you're probably sane and sensible, unlike me, and you do your writing on the side as a hobby. Tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing. I don't know, dear viewer, what it is you want to write, how it is you want to write, how seriously you want to take it, whether you want it to be a career, whether you've retired and are looking to take it up as, as a hobby or... Or, or what you're doing, whether you want to do it full time or not that, that at all, but I can tell you this, the most important thing is that you write for yourself. I mean, whether you're writing a, a technical manual, uh, a role playing game, rules book, a novel, whether you're writing science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime thrillers, erotica, romantic fiction, whatever, the person you really have to please is yourself. If you're not happy with what you've done, th there's no point. You can't be constantly chasing down the, the audience and their desires because an audience is, is diverse and lots of people want different things and someone is not going to be satisfied. And thanks to the wonders of the internet, they can tell you <laughs> that they're not satisfied and that they hate what you've done or, or whatever else. Sometimes this feedback's useful, more often than not, it isn't. But the most important audience is yourself. Are you proud of the work? Are you satisfied with it? Are you willing to accept the compromises that you've had to make to do it? Are you happy with the money you're going to get to do it? Because it's probably not going to be very much um, unless you're incredibly lucky. So yeah, you need to be happy with what you've done. And writing can be very isolating. We're fortunate to live in an era of, of, of social media and, and video and everything else that kind of softens that a lot. But it is isolating. And writers are the only artistic group that does correlate more strongly to mental illness, depression. So keep that in mind as well and, and work to counter it. You know, make sure you've got supportive people around you who will help you shore you up and, and boost your confidence when you need it because it can be a, a lonely old thing. I hope something here has helped you out. If you've got books or anything you're working on or you want me to follow up on any particular questions or aspects, do let me know. There is one other thing though. <laughs> Writers, more than anyone else, I think, suffer from imposter syndrome. We don't feel like we deserve to be here. We don't feel like we're professional enough. We don't feel like our books are any good. Um, I certainly don't feel that way and, well, I do feel that way. And I had to be prodded into making this, this video, so. Just keep that in mind. You're probably better than you think. Except for the people who think they're better than they are, who are much worse. Humility overall is a good thing, but don't take it too far. Zang. Everyone's so ordinary. They watch the world with blind eyes. Can't you hear them talking funny? Loneliness unbroken, quit the past above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore.